previously on Cycling Eurasia. I took off from Tashkent with a rather rough start, only making it as far as Sirdaria, a town named after the river passing through it. From here, it took me an additional three days until I reached Samarkand. Uzbekistan train, all aboard to Samarkand. Getting up horsey. Random stands in the middle of the highway. I will never have to worry about dehydration. Some old buildings here. Hello, Salam Alaik. Small town about 80 kilometers or so away from Gizax. I'm gonna grab some dinner here at the Carbon Cafe because I'm just starving. I hope this place has reasonable food. I guess we'll soon find out. I still have yet to find a portable stove for cooking on the road, but it didn't bother me for too much at this stage of the journey. Upon entering this place, I saw an interesting musical display, reminiscent of the traditional Soviet values here in the accordions. I don't remember the exact name of the town, but my best guess is Gargarin, since I was forced to make a left at a tea intersection upon leaving. What fascinates me about not just Uzbekistan, but the entirety of Central Asia as a whole, is the popularity of the watermelon fruit. As you can see, many of them are still ripe. That's the yellow color they're in right now, and given some time, they'll be green. But I see them being sold everywhere, like in the middle of nowhere on the highways. People just drive large loads of watermelon out to these remote places and try to sell them because they believe they'd have better competition. Uh, uh, sorry, they would have better chances of making sales. So I'm like, better chances of making sales on the road than in the city center because there's less competition and. Yeah, watermelon does taste good out here. Better than at home, because they're fresh. But it seems to be lacking in other fruits, like raspberries, bananas, oranges, they're not, they don't have as high yield in the farms. Anyway, 60 kilometers to go to Gizak, and the sun is gone, so I'm gonna have to push through the night, push through the darkness, and prevail. Yeah, on second thought, I think I'm going to camp here for tonight. Um, at this rate, my average distance per day is only about 70 kilometers or so. so I'm going to have to accept that fact until I can build up my fitness to a stronger level. There doesn't seem to be too many mosquitoes here. It looks reasonable. I'll set up my tent away from the tractor and we will start again tomorrow. All right guys, good night. She's X29. And we have a split in the road. As you can see, the majority of traffic wants to go straight towards Termez, the border city with Afghanistan, whereas much fewer vehicles are taking this side road and that makes me feel a lot safer. 
Hopefully I can enjoy some leisure cycling without the noise. And proximity to these big trucks. Yeah. There's quite a bit of traffic going in that direction. Quite a bit of guys there who are very eager to get kidnapped by ISIS and Taliban terrorists. No, I'm just kidding. Termez is still supposed to be a safe city, but it's the other side of the bridge of Hiratan, which I would never consider going. And yeah, so far this is really good. I had two flat tires again yesterday and the day before, which both took me about a couple hours to get back on track and I covered minimal distance. Alright guys, since this road is quiet enough, <clears throat> as I was saying, since this road is quiet enough, I figured I could talk a bit easier about some other reasons why I decided to embark on this journey. It is also a way for me to escape my homeland because I don't think I'm worthy of being in my homeland. Um, yeah, so I have had a number of different hobbies in my lifetime, things that I enjoyed doing throughout my childhood and that I've practiced that to try and reach a certain level to be proud of and show off to my peers. For the longest time it was soccer. I really wanted to be a professional soccer player when I was little as a preteen growing up. I aspired to be like Zinedine Zidane or Lionel Messi. but. I quickly realized that the hardships involved were just too great and I did not have what it took to be like them. So then, once I graduated from high school, I started playing competitive chess and in a much shorter period of time. I went from being a total noob, like a 1200, to national master level. I got the title, and if you want, you can send me a challenge on chess.com. I don't use that website very often, but my username is in the description given below. But yeah, I literally got to 2200 ELO strength. My FIDE rating is over 2000 in just four years. I grew exponentially compared to the 10 years of being stagnant as a soccer player I've been much more successful at chess but even so I still realize that there are guys much better than me and I consistently lost to them no matter how hard I tried to beat them so the moral of this story is that no matter what kind of hobby or interest you have growing up it's almost guaranteed that you are never going to be the best at anything because there's always going to be someone stronger. Someone who has been beating on his or her craft longer than you have. Someone who has endured more hardships than you have. Someone who has pushed the extra mile which you have yet to push. And for the very few of you who can prove me wrong, well, congratulations, you're at the top of the pyramid in your field of expertise. But for the vast majority, that's just the cruel reality that we live in. And I know for a fact I'm never going to be number one in the world at anything. Not on a planet with a population of 7 billion plus. But that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the short time that I have to live on this planet. I choose to make the most of it by 
embarking on these unusual adventures and setting foot in places that few Westerners have been to before. I choose something different from the traditional paths that most people choose and I'm hoping as a reward I'll be able to earn what few people have. And what I'm doing right now is something that any of you guys could also do very easily. It just takes a bit of bravery, determination, and preparation. Like, I mean, I'm an amateur cyclist. I, I'm not qualified in any way to be a participant in Tour de France or any serious competition like that. I'm just going on a bike as far as I can possibly go and see what happens. But. Yeah, hopefully when I'm finished, if I'm still alive by then, I will share my stories with families and friends through social media or just by talking to them, I meet them in person. Is that a donkey? That's an unusual sound. Soon after, I ran into a few friendly Uzbeks who wanted to take pictures with me as I started closing in towards the city of Jizak. Besides passing by the main entrance and staying at the F4C Al Hotel, I didn't do much else here. Alright, it seems as though we are now going to merge with the M39 highway and I feel relieved because this road is just too narrow for traffic going in both directions. It forces me to yield onto the rocks as a cyclist for my own safety. smoothly. Let's see. Moment of truth. Summer can 75 Ks. On this final day, I made a solid 100 kilometers of cycling and reached my accommodation around midnight. Concluding this episode, thank you all for watching.